Make sure that you're prepared for your day with the most important latest information in the fight against the coronavirus. Yeah, we begin this morning with the steps being taken to make sure your kids can return to school safely. The North Carolina Schools Reopening Task Force is developing a social distancing plan for teachers and uh, students. Its primary focus here is finding ways to improve access to remote learning and how to overcome the learning gap that comes with not having students and teachers in the classroom. The group plans to have recommendations in place before school resumes in the fall. Starting today, flight attendants on American Airlines will be required to wear face masks. That's a change from the previous policy. Starting May 11th, passengers will have to wear those masks as well. American will provide those masks at boarding. And the major story that we'll be following today, the group Reopen Mech is planning a protest in Uptown Charlotte similar to this one in Raleigh. The group will start their protest at Trade and Tryon Streets at noon today. And that is where our reporter Anthony Castora is this morning. Now, Anthony, the organizers want to get their point across, but they also want to stay safe. Yeah, that's right. When they come out here to trade and try on today about noon, they will demand that everything reopen. But as you say, John, they want to do it in the safest way possible. So they're asking everyone who comes out to wear gloves, masks, and to stay inside of their car. The Reopen Mech group actually started on Facebook and is intended to be an offshoot of the Reopen NC movement we've been seeing at the state capitol. They are demanding the governor lift the stay at home order all at once so people can get back to work. One organizer of the event here locally says they want their freedom and liberties restored. We want uh, people to abide by these social distancing guidelines and anybody who does decide to actually protest in the streets, they are more than welcome to do so. However, we do ask that people maintain six feet apart and wear masks and gloves as well. At least 100 individuals. Now, the governor is warning we need to be patient and we could start phase one of reopening the state as early as next week. But we need to improve in some areas, and that includes the number of people who are in the hospitals right now, as well as decreasing the number of confirmed cases in the state. Uh, he says our action now will determine how quickly we'll be able to actually reopen the state. My message today is to stay vigilant right now. We need people to continue following the stay-at-home order so that we can move into the phases of easing restrictions. Now, the Meck County Health Director says that our, uh, really the guidelines here and our local trends are actually stabilizing, which means that we could see phase one begin next week locally as well. Back to you. All right, we'll be keeping an eye on those uh, protests today. Anthony, thank you. Protesters held a similar rally in Hickory yesterday. Some business owners there are upset about this stay at home order. They say they're having problems getting any money from the federal government's business loan program. One owner we talked to says he's determined to open up today, even if it means that he could be arrested. And yesterday, North Carolina saw its largest single day jump in the number of confirmed coronavirus cases. The 561 new cases brings our state total to more than 10,000. And while that is a big number, we do want to point out here that there have been more than 128,000 tests done. So only 8% of the cases are coming back positive, which is a good sign for the efforts to reopen. In South Carolina, there are nearly 6,100 positive cases. But again, that is a small fraction when it comes to the 56,000 tests that have been administered. The state has seen 244 deaths from the coronavirus. Just a half hour ago, we told you about the outbreak of COVID-19 at the Tyson Food Plant in Wilkes County. Well, now we're learning about another outbreak at the Smithfield Packing Facility in Clinton. The county public health director said there are 21 confirmed cases connected to the plant. Some employees have stopped showing up to work altogether. Others say they're overworked. One woman who spoke anonymously to our sister station, Raleigh, says reporting to work is like walking into a war zone. I have no choice. If I don't work, I don't have a job. That's just plainly the way they put it. I have kids I have to take care of. I have to be here. Now, that employee did say Smithfield is increasing pay for its employees starting today. Workers are required to wear a mask on site and having their temperatures checked before entering the building each day. Within the next week, Whole Foods will start requiring customers to wear masks. But if you show up without one, don't worry. 
The stores will give out free disposable masks as you come in. And starting on Monday, you'll have to wear a mask at Costco. The only exceptions to that rule are for people who cannot wear one because of a medical condition or for children who are younger than two years old. And with so many businesses looking for help to stay afloat, it may come as a surprise to learn that Boeing says that it won't need any taxpayer money during this shutdown. Boeing says that it received $25 billion through bond sales, meaning that it won't need to borrow money from the government. Lawmakers set aside $17 billion for Boeing in the $2 trillion stimulus package earlier this year. And yesterday we told you that Boeing planned to cut 10% of its workforce. That includes many of the jobs at its North Charleston plant. The cuts will come through a combination of buyouts, retirements, and involuntary layoffs. And we have other important news this morning. We have learned that the Eastland development team will hold a virtual meeting for the community today. It's to discuss its plans for the site and for Major League Soccer. The team will be giving a presentation of its rezoning petition process. We told you that this is necessary to build headquarters and practice fields for Charlotte's MLS team. After today's presentation, the development team will open a public comment period through May 12th. Anyone can provide their feedback to the city on plans for the site. The 70 acre site on Central Avenue is an opportunity zone. That means that future developers get tax incentives for working in the area. In 2016, Charlotte City Council sold 11 acres of the site to CMS for the future home of the Charlotte East Language Academy. Well, here's an unusual uh, controversial idea. North Carolina lawmakers are considering allowing restaurants to sell takeout mixed alcoholic drinks. The bill would allow restaurants that are closed to dine-in customers to sell up to two drinks per food order. The containers would require a lid that would prevent you from drinking it unless it is removed entirely. And if you've been jonesing for a specialty coffee, there is some good news for you. Starbucks plans to start reopening its stores next week. Right now, about half of U.S. Starbucks are closed. The company is planning a phase reopening with shorter hours, modified operations, including a new entryway to hand off your order.